There we go. I love Child Dedication Sunday, right? There's power in the words that were said and prayed over these children. You can feel it too, right? Yeah, it's a pretty powerful moment for these kids and these families. So thank you, church family, for being a part of it this morning. So some of these children are, are old enough to remember what's happening today, and others of them are not old enough. But regardless, these parents and families have given these children a beautiful gift, the power of a blessing. For the last two weeks, we have been in a series called The Weight of Our Words. And I encourage you, if you're just joining us, to go back and listen to the first two weeks because Pastors Cody and Susan laid a beautiful foundation for us, um, and they were just great messages. So words are more than mere syllables of sound. They are windows into the heart because out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks, Luke 6, 45. And Proverbs 18.21 tells us explicitly that death and life are in the power of the tongue. Words can be hurtful, prideful, dismissive, commanding, demeaning. Words also have the ability to give life, to speak blessing into a person's future and over their present. Words can heal, words can inspire, Words can lift up the downcast soul. Words can restore. The truth is that the power of blessing and cur cursing is in our tongue. With one small word, we can wreak havoc or build up. Today, we're going to focus on the power of blessing. I encourage you to come back next week, though, as Pastor Cody will talk about the power of cursing. And I can promise you that it won't be a sermon on what good, what good words are and what bad words are, right? A cursing is something altogether different. And sometimes a curse may seem initially beneficial, but in the end, it brings unforeseen negative consequences. So thankfully, on this beautiful Mother's Day, we get to talk about blessing and not cursing, right? So whoever did the schedule... They get a little thumbs up, because that would have been kind of sad to talk about cursing on Mother's Day. So, what is a blessing? I have a couple of definitions for you, and they'll be up on the screen as well. So, Dallas Willard defines blessing in this way. Blessing is the projection of good into the life of another. It isn't just words. It is the actual putting forth of your will for the good of another person. It always involves God. Because when you will the good of another person, you realize only God is capable of bringing that. Our very own Pastor Susan defined blessing this way. Blessing is speaking the life of God over someone, an organization, or a situation. A blessing is a calling for the Holy Spirit to come and transform us. David Stubbs. I'm giving you many definitions because a blessing is more than just a nice thing to say, more than a compliment. A blessing transforms us. I must admit that I don't really expect God to transform me because someone speaks certain words over me. But blessings given in the Bible suggest that these words are more than just a sentiment, more than something nice to say, and more than just a word of encouragement. Blessings are powerful. They change us. Nineteen years ago, this summer, I received my call to full-time ministry, and it changed my life. In fact, I'm not sure I would be standing in front of you today if I didn't receive that call, that blessing. In fact, I, I think I would be uh, on the sidelines of Citizens Bank Park telling a TV audience why the Philadelphia Phillies are underachieving even though they have so many all-stars on their team. <laughs> Sorry to go down the path of cursing there for a second. My grandmother, my grandmother's 93 years old. She loves the Philadelphia Phillies, like watches every game. I was there Thursday night and we watched that epic collapse. Just <laughs> um, anyways, anyways, back to back to blessing. In all seriousness, though, I was heading into my sophomore year of high school, 
And up until that point, you can ask any member of my family, I was headed to sports broadcasting. Sports were my life. I loved sports. Uh, but God had a different plan in mind. I was at a Christian camp with my pastor and his wife and a few of uh, my friends in the youth group. And it was just a Wednesday night. There was no candles, nothing fancy, nothing, just normal night. And God whispered with that still small voice, you're going to do what that guy's doing up there. Well, that guy was a youth pastor. Now, I had never experienced anything like that in my life. I don't think I had heard the still small voice of God before that time. So I uh, kept that to myself because I was like, this is just kind of a crazy experience. And I went to bed that night. The next morning, my pastor and his wife always checked up on us at breakfast, which was really sweet of them. And uh, we were just talking, whatever we were talking about. And my pastor says to me before they head to their session, hey, Jenny, I got a tug on my heart last night to talk to you about what it means to be in full-time ministry. I laughed. Because I, what? Um, again, I was 15 years old, uh, had never experienced anything like this in my life. I then explained to him my experience and what had happened. And he said, the Holy Spirit's doing something here. So during break, he's like, we're going to take a walk and we're going to talk about it. I was like, I trusted him. We were close family friends. Uh, so I, we, I did it. So that afternoon we walked around the Delaware water gap and he blessed my call. He didn't dismiss it because I was young. He didn't dismiss it because fill in the blank. It was this weird experience. He blessed it. On that day, 19 years ago this summer, because somebody blessed my call into ministry, I'm here today. Now this story reminds me a lot about the mentorship between Paul and Timothy in the New Testament. Paul poured into Timothy... And Timothy then was able to pour into others. It's like Timothy had a hand up and a hand down. Timothy was being blessed by Paul, which then allowed Timothy to bless others. In 2 Timothy 1.6, we read these words of Paul. That's why I remind you, speaking to Timothy, to use the gift God gave you. God gave you that gift when I laid my hands on you. Now let it grow as a small flame grows into a fire. Paul saw in Timothy something that Timothy couldn't see in himself. And he continually blessed Timothy to use those gifts. It's powerful. I got to experience and live out my call throughout my last years of high school. Because my pastor and other ministry leaders blessed it. That call I received from God that Wednesday night and the way that my home church and my family blessed that call transformed me. It changed my life. I'm so grateful that Pastor Don and Miss Cindy and Miss Darlene and everybody else at that little church in Muncie, Pennsylvania didn't dismiss it. Rather, they blessed it. They used the influence that God had given them in my life to keep pouring blessing into my life. Because of them and God's amazing grace, it's not just my life that which changed that day. Future generations to come have been and will continue to be blessed. The power of a blessing. We were created to be blessed and we were created to be a blessing. Deuteronomy 30, 19 says this, I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Now choose blessing. It was God's intention that we would be people of blessing rather than of cursing. As I was preparing this message, there were many examples in scripture that I could use that would demonstrate the power of blessing. But the one that kept coming back to me was the story of Simon Peter, one of Jesus's 12 disciples. I absolutely love Peter. Here's one way to describe Peter. He left everything to follow his teacher and possessed a passion that would change the world. Here's another. Poor, uneducated, quick-tempered, 
and full of doubts and fears. It doesn't sound like the same man, does it? But it is. Peter was flawed, but a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. And if we are honest, aren't we all? The part of Peter's story that I want to touch on today comes from Matthew 16, 13 to 20. This account comes after Peter and the other disciples had witnessed Jesus performing a miracle. The feeding of the 5,000, which Jesus did with five loaves of bread and two fish. They saw Jesus walk on water to rescue them during a storm. Peter himself actually walked on water. But then as the gospel of Matthew tells us, he became frightened. He became, began to sink, and Peter cried out, Lord, rescue me. And Jesus immediately reached out his hand and lifted Peter up. As it so often is with Peter, just after we see him take two remarkable steps forward in faith, we see him take one step back. This is the picture we'll see again and again of Peter. Faithful and bold, yet easily confused, discouraged, and oh so flawed. Maybe that's why I and maybe even you love Peter so much. He reminds us of ourselves. He reminds us that despite our flaws, we can still be followers of Jesus. And Jesus will still rescue, befriend, and bless us. That was a little detour there, but being reminded of that story makes Matthew 16, 13 to 20 even more remarkable. So we're going to read it now, and it will be up on the screen as well. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say the Son of Man is? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. But what about you, he asked, who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Joseph, Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosened in heaven. Then he ordered his disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. Wait, what? Jesus just blessed Simon, saying, Blessed are you, Simon. I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. What a blessing. But does Jesus know who he's talking to in this moment? This is Simon Peter, the one who once he got out of the boat, he sank because he didn't trust Jesus had him. And if we fast forward to Christ's crucifixion, this is the same Simon Peter who would deny knowing Jesus three times. He did, deserted Jesus when Jesus needed him the most. And yet... And yet, Jesus blessed him. Despite his flaws, or maybe even because of them, Jesus blessed this flawed, faithful disciple, saying that you will build my church, my community, and I will give you the keys of the kingdom, the power of a blessing. In preparation for this message, I read this devotional written by Alan Wright, who is a pastor in North Carolina, and he laid out three steps of speaking blessing over your children. But as I was reading these steps, I realized that they don't only fit in the context of raising children, but really of any relationship, including the relationship that Jesus and Simon Peter had. So I have adapted them just a little bit, but I wanted to give him some credit for uh, these steps. So here's the first step. Affirm the blessing. Affirm the blessing. Jesus tells Simon that he sees something in him that quite possibly no one else saw or could even imagine. Likely not even Simon himself. 
They had to be in relationship and community with one another in order for Jesus to see the gifts Peter had. In order for Jesus to bless Peter, they had to do life with one another. The power of blessing comes when we are in community, in relationship with one another. Jesus saw Peter's willingness to take risks. He saw Peter get out of the boat and walk on water. He heard Peter's boldness and courage when he declared that Jesus was the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Jesus saw his conviction and commitment and knew that Simon Peter would be the rock on which he would build his church, his community. Jesus could have kept all of this to himself, but he had influence in Peter's life. So he affirmed, he stated strongly and publicly that Simon Peter would be the rock in which the church would be built. And Christ is God's image bearers we have been given the power to bless. Pastor Cody a few weeks back in the first message said that we all have influence over others. And he's right. If you are a parent or grandparent, you are laying a foundation for your children and grandchildren's lives. If you are a teacher, you are doing the same for your students. If you are in leadership, in business, or in some other arena of life, you are laying a foundation for those who are, you are influencing, those looking up to you and those coming after you. In every relationship of your life, you are either blessing or cursing. With God's help, may our words be of blessing. We all have influence. How can you use your influence to bless others, to speak? life so step one affirm the blessing step two connect the blessing to their identity connect the blessing to their identity jesus helped simon peter discover who he really is he's not a poor uneducated fisherman he is the rock he is now peter which literally means rock the greek word for rock jesus uses uses here is petra doesn't typically just mean a stone. No, Petra typically signifies a rock ledge, a cliff, a massive rock. Simon Peter wouldn't just be a rock or a stone. He would be a massive rock, the foundation upon which Jesus would establish his church. And declaring this blessing to Peter, Peter's identity changed. The way he looked at his life changed. The way he interacted with others changed. He had to feel a sense of purpose now, a sense of belonging. That is powerful. We all long for a purpose in this world. We all long to know who we are. Pastors Susan, Cody, and Cindy came up with this awesome card. And on the front of the card is scriptures that talk about the power of our words. And on the back are all of these I am statements. Right? I am a child of God. I have been justified and united with Christ. I am God's masterpiece. I am born of God and the evil one cannot touch me. Right? These are powerful statements. These are who God says we are. So today and later this week and month, we hope that you'll pick up a card. If you didn't pick one up on your way in, you can grab one on your way out. And our prayer as a staff is that these I am statements would become who you are. If you have a past like Peter did, and maybe there's a story there, and you just keep repeating that story and over and over again, that's not who you are. This, these scriptures, a son and daughter of God, that's who you are. So, this gets me now to step number three. Connect their identity to a positive future. So as Peter changed, transformed by his blessing, he sure was. Peter, after Christ's ascension into heaven, would become the spokesperson for the apostles. This unschooled man spoke with boldness to crowds of thousands. 
bringing them the good news and helping them to come to know Jesus as Savior and Lord. Peter was the one that showed the world that non-Jews can be Christ's followers too. We read that in Acts 10 and 11. Jesus used Peter to make this clear to show us just how big God's love is and just how capable his grace is that it can forgive the sins of all and give all everlasting life. If that's not being the church, I don't know what is. We are gathered here today because of the blessing that Jesus gave to Peter, that he would be the rock, and on him, Christ's church would be built, and Christ's church, his community, was built. Belongings dramatically change people. It changed Peter. That doesn't mean, though, that Peter lived this perfect life on his way to building the church. He still made mistakes As mentioned earlier, he ended up denying Jesus three times, the person who gave him his blessing. But that doesn't mean that there still isn't power and blessing. Peter used it all, his flaws, his gifts, and his blessing to transform the world. Blessings aren't magical words that fix everything or make us happier. Blessings serve as a guide and motivation to pursue a course of life within the blessing. They are meant to expand our lives, and the effects of a blessing are seldom limited to the individual. It may extend to families, communities, or entire nations. They continue from one generation to the next. We have no idea how the words of blessing spoken over these 10 children that we dedicated here today will impact the family and the communities they live in and even this world, but there will be an impact. It will be fun to see how the blessings that were spoken over them and shape their identity into who God created them to be and to transform them and others. As we close our service today, I want to read you a a scripture and worship team. You can make your way on up. It's Genesis 1, 28. And it says, God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish and the sea and the birds and the sky and over, living, ev- and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Why I wanted to end with this verse is that God blessed before Adam and Eve or anybody else did any work. Friends, you are children of God. We don't have to do anything to earn our blessing, to receive a blessing, to be loved by God. All we have to do is just receive it and be open to it. So during our our last time of worship here, there are going to be pastors and prayer people who will want to pray a blessing over you. And I encourage you to go and pray, have them pray with you. The prayer benches up here are open to you. Feel free to use those. If you picked up a card, use the card and just read over these scriptures and these statements and declare them over yourself. But friends, this is your time, your chance to, um, to receive a blessing from God because he loves you and wants to bless you. Not because of anything you've done, but simply because of who you are, his son and his daughter. Let's pray. Father God, I pray that you would quiet our hearts and minds Pray that you would draw us closer to yourself. That you would whisper to us the blessing we need to hear in this moment. I pray that you would give us the courage we need to get up from our chair to receive a blessing from someone if that's what you are asking us to do. I pray that we would receive the blessing, that it would shape who we are and transform us and ultimately those around us. In Jesus' name, amen.